the most violent and explosive force on Earth, leveling cities, building mountains, and reshaping continents. Please join us as we go behind closed doors with the men and women who live and work in the shadow of the world's most active volcano, Hawaii's Kilauea. This volcano has been unleashing its fury on the Big Island since 1983. Here, a small group of geologists experienced the raw power of Kilauea firsthand. They allowed me inside their world as they work to unlock the secrets behind this remarkable force of nature. Over the last 20 years, it has destroyed almost 200 homes. In some places, the lava is more than 150 feet deep, and it already covers about 40 square miles. It's a constant worry that the eruption will get larger and cover more land. On the other hand, it's also a mecca. People come to the island and to Kilauea to see the eruption, which is it's really a marvelous sight to see. Kilauea is part of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, located on the largest and southernmost island in the chain. This volcano might not be what you expect. There's no peak with a pointed cone and no fiery explosions at the present time. But it is erupting constantly. Only the red-hot lava flows underground. It runs through huge natural tubes for miles until it reaches the sea. That's where you'll see the fireworks. Tourists come here to look, but geologists come here to work in an area strictly off limits to the public. Perched on the rim of the crater is the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Behind these closed doors, a team of scientists monitor the activity of Kilauea around the clock. It's not just for the sake of science. Changes in the volcano can mean a large eruption may be imminent and lives can be at stake. The U.S. Geological Survey monitors this volcano more closely than any other volcano is monitored in the world. If you're a volcanologist studying volcanoes anywhere on the planet, there's a good chance you'll come to the Hawaii Volcano Observatory to study this volcano. They're drawn here because Kilauea is so active. They go places other people can't and take risks no one else should. It's uh, dangerous to us only if we're uh, incautious in the field. If we take chances and we can get in trouble, certainly you don't want to be walking on a lava flow that is moving very fast. For example, you might fall in, you know, things of that nature. But have believe you been me, in one of those flows? yeah, you have. And you learn by your experience. And a couple people here have gotten badly burned by stepping into lava too. When molten rock is underground, it's called magma. It becomes lava when it reaches the surface, and it gives new meaning to the word hot. This lava, when it's erupted, is around 2,150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's so hot that uh, it will melt uh, a lot of metals, actually. Um, so it makes a great pizza oven, too. Despite the inherent danger, there are more volcanologists now than ever before, and more of them are pushing the envelope. Since 1990, 10 have lost their lives. Some of them are adventurous and, and tend to go places in order to learn new things. Eventually, you know, some people are going to die because of that. Uh, it's unfortunate. But, but the more that we learn, the less that, that will happen. They learn by continually gathering and analyzing information. Some of the most valuable clues to what's happening under the Earth come from these seismographs in the observatory. I'm just noticing, incidentally, we had an earthquake uh, uh, this oh my morning. Gosh. You Look see that? This? Yeah. This is this why is, we were here. Yeah, that, that's why we were here. Uh, so that means something's going and, on underground. Something's going on underground. It's because magma is only below the ground here about um, a mile or so. Yeah, we're right on top of something pretty exciting here. That's not uncommon. They have small earthquakes every day. The chemical composition of fresh lava can also tell them a lot, but collecting it isn't easy. Skylights are natural holes in the surface of the volcano. They provide windows into the underground rivers of molten lava and are some of the best places to get samples. They call it fishing. A little bit more. Instead of a hook, they use a hammer to reel in globs of red hot rock. It's sort of a, a psychological thing that you go through the first time you ever walk on a lava flow. 
is that you have to overcome your instinctive um, desire to run away because it is intensely hot. They gave me a once in a lifetime opportunity to go with them to collect samples. I'm going to be going out there in the field. What advice do you have for me? Uh, wear boots, long pants, and keep your wits about you because you, you never want to do something foolish around an active lava flow. Uh, it's possible that you could be trapped between two uh, tongues of a flow, for example. So you always want to kind of look around. The tendency is to get so excited when you see the lava that you forget what might be happening behind your back. So you want to continue to look. With those warnings firmly in mind, we drove to a staging area six miles from the observatory. There are no tourists where we were going, and it's accessible only by helicopter. Pilot David Okita has worked with the volcanologists for more than a decade and has seen Kilauea at its most deadly. You'd have lava fountains in excess of you know, 300 feet up to over 1,000 feet at times. And we couldn't fly within sometimes a quarter mile of the lava fountain because you could feel the plexiglass on the window of our helicopter, you know, literally heating up. Flying over the lava fields, we searched for an area where lava had broken through the crust. The team spotted a red hot glow, and David hunted for a safe place to land. I'd seen pictures in the observatory, but they didn't prepare me for seeing it in person. Oh my gosh. It is unbelievable. Wow. That's lava. Yeah. Woo! That's the real stuff. You can see it in movies, but you can't imagine what it looks like for real. It is. It's so intensely yeah. hot. Oh, it is hot. It was an amazing sight, but we weren't there just to look. We had samples to collect. Oh my gosh. The lava is so hot, it can melt man-made fabric. So I changed into a cotton shirt, put on my gloves, and went to work. This is unbelievably hot, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's really hard to get close enough to it. Let's see if we can give this a try. Cover my face. Cover my face. <clears throat> so it's a small sample. <clears throat> okay. All right, here it is. There's my, my lava sample right there. It cooled and hardened in a matter of seconds. It's scary. I mean, it's scary to go up close to it because it's just has such a life of its own. It was like reaching into a blast furnace, and it was a little intimidating, but I knew I could get a bigger sample. Whew. It is so hot, but that was a pretty big sample. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that. It's one thing to collect the sample, it's another thing to be able to hold on to it. Check it out, though. Just steps away from the flow, the temperature drops dramatically, and the rock is cool enough to walk on. But if you stand in one place too long, the soles of your shoes melt. These volcanologists go through about four pairs of boots a year. It would be hard to top that experience, but they had one more dramatic and even more dangerous location to show me. Half a mile away, lava from underground tubes pours into the Pacific Ocean. It's one of the most deadly places in Hawaii. There were recently two deaths here at Kilauea by people that got engulfed in really hot steam down where the lava is going into the ocean. And they inhaled the steam and uh, died as a result. So steam is, is, creates a very picturesque landscape sometimes, but it can be at times very hazardous. As the lava meets the ocean, it forms a platform called a bench. Although it looks perfectly solid, it's not, and can collapse at any time. This can create a steam explosion that will hurl um, microwave oven-sized blocks skyward and throw them uh, hundreds of feet inland. Can also throw a scalding wave of water inland. For the people who have lived on the island for generations, the volcano is a fact of life. Because it's so unpredictable, they depend on the observatory. No one knows Kilauea better than the volcanologists who monitor it 
every day. At the first sign of danger, they are the ones who issue the warnings that can save neighborhoods and lives. The volcano generally doesn't erupt without some kind of warning. But the geologists have to act fast. Usually, they have little time to alert the public. Here at Kilauea, we have only a two or three hours, generally speaking, because things happen very, very quickly. First, the national park is notified. You may also be asked to evacuate. Then county civil defense is alerted so it can warn the community. Since 1983, close to 200 homes have been destroyed, but no lives have been lost. The lava usually moves slowly enough that with proper warning, residents have time to evacuate. And it was a very emotional experience for all of us to work down in those communities in Kalapana when, when the flows were inundating those areas and, and destroying people's lives, really. But also, you have to look at the long view, which is that the whole state of Hawaii is nothing but volcanoes. So, you know, the long-term picture is that the volcanoes are also creating a lot of land that we live on. I now understand why volcanologists are drawn to Kilauea. It is both beautiful and terrifying at the same time. It destroys, and yet it also creates. To walk on an active volcano is to feel the earth come alive.